Happy Sunday morning to you. I hope everybody's had a fantastic Thanksgiving weekend, good holiday, get ready to get back into it for the end of the year. We're so excited about starting the Advent <clears throat> this week. Got a great message for you from Pastor Matt. But before we get into that, let me just ask you, just take a minute, go ahead and send us a little note there on your Facebook or <clears throat> on your phone, whatever it is. Just let us know that you're watching, where you're watching from, and who's watching with you. I'm so glad that you're here today. If you're watching for the first time, just kind of checking out Christ South, we want you to know this is a place that we like to call home. We like to say one, two, three, welcome home, because we want you to have a place that you can call home. I'm not going to delay much longer. I'm going to go ahead and get right into uh, Christ South Worship Band, and I'll join you at the end of the sermon. Amen. Welcome to worship this morning, church. We're glad that you're here. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving. Hope you ate good food and you didn't get too stuff. Maybe you did. Amen. It was amazing. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. Yeah. When death was arrested. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. And my orphan heart is given away. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Come on! Oh, your grace, so free, washes over. I'm a prisoner, no. My shame was a ransom. He canceled my death. He called me his friend. That's when death was arrested in my life. Yeah. Oh, yes, he did. The grace so free washes over. rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in death. Yes, he did. That's when death was arrested in my Jesus. 
somebody in your house for a second. Just take a second and hug somebody in your house. As we come together, we're looking for a God that makes ways in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the frustration, in the midst of the mess of our lives. We're looking for a God that makes a way. We're singing about that God right here this morning. The song called Waymaker. Because that's who our God is, the one who makes the way. Where there were seas, you made highways. We were singing about that a few weeks ago. This is our God. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Sing, you are here. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Yeah. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Here's why. You are we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yeah, you are. You are. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching, touching every heart. I worship you. Yeah, come on, church. I worship you are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. So you are here, touching. You are here, touching every heart. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, God. You are here.
must keep my light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when we don't see it, God, you're working. Even when we don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, God. You never stop working for us. In the midst of all the frustrations that we deal with, Lord, at work and at home and our marriages with our kids, God, with our friends, with our neighbors, you're always working. So do you be all the honor and glory now and forever. And Lord, keep working on us. Because we don't see it, we forget it stop believing so God you gotta believe for us come on preach now you gotta believe for us Lord you gotta believe in us it's all you got cause we can't hold it. even when I don't see it even when I don't see it you work even when I don't feel it you work and you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working Church, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you for this day. We know that every day we live, every day we wake up is a gift, and we should live it as such. So give us the strength and courage and the mindset, dear Lord, to go out today and be disciples for you, to go out and love one another as you've loved us. And dear Lord, we know that right now our world continues to hurt as this pandemic rages on. We know that there has been death and sickness and job loss and the list goes on and on. Be with everybody who's been affected by it. Continue to wrap your arms around them and let them know that they're being loved for and prayed for. And dear Lord, we know that there are people who are hurting physically, spiritually, mentally today. People we know personally. So we want to take a moment, dear Lord, either out loud or in our hearts and lift up those prayer requests. And dear Lord, we also know that there are folks within our church who are hurting, dear Lord. And we have a prayer list, dear Lord, that we put up. And we just want to take a moment and pray for one person on that list. That they will find whatever they need from you. Whether it's healing, whether it's peace, whether it's comfort. We take a moment just to lift up one of those. And finally, dear Lord, that this is the day of Sabbath. This is Sunday, and we're getting ready for a new week. So we just ask that you renew us, renew our energy, renew our faith, and let us get ready for the week that's ahead. And all of God's children said, amen. Well, good morning, church, and welcome to worship. My name is Jeff Taylor. I'm the community minister for Christ South. And we're glad you're worshiping with us on this Sunday morning. Now, when we talk about community, it's much bigger than just Christ South or the old dairy farm. Community is community, like downtown Matthews here. So we're glad that you're here this morning with us worshiping. Welcome home to all of you out there. Now, before we get into worship, a couple of quick announcements for you. The first is we want you to join us in our virtual coffee house. It will start right after worship this morning. There'll be a Zoom link in the comment section. Click that. Join me in the coffee house. It starts about 11 o'clock, goes till about 11.25. We just talk about the message and we talk about life. It's a great time. I hope you can join me then. The second is, what's so important right now for churches across the world is to continue giving. 
So you can obviously mail your offering to our church office. You can drop it by the church office at the Providence campus, or you can text the word praise to 73256. Once again, that's the word praise to 73256. Now, as for one of the service things we're doing over the next couple of weeks, I talked about it last week, we are working with the Union County Christmas Bureau to collect toys, gifts, clothing, personal care products, and food for kids between the ages of birth and 18 years old. There's a drop box at the old dairy farm, house number two. You can make donations there. Also, we have stockings that you can pick up, and it has a list of things you can buy. You can fill that stocking up, return everything to the old dairy farm by December the 10th. It's a great way for us to just show love to the community, so I hope you can take part in that. And finally, we've got a couple things for you for our kids. Class Dojo with our Next Gen Minister, Sully. That is up and running, as well as Christ Kids TV. Both of those links are in the comments section here on our Facebook page, so check those out for all our kids. Class Dojo, Upper Elementary, the Christ Kids TV, that's for our Lower Elementary, check them out. And I guess that's it. So now, here is Pastor Matt with today's message. Good morning, Christ South. Great to be with you all this morning. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I hope you ate way too much. I hope it was awesome. We've got an opportunity to reach out in our community. Again, I just want to implore you in a couple of ways to be thinking about others beyond our own families, beyond our own circle. One is to really be making sure that we're a part of that Union County gifting. We've got a, an awesome way to do that. If you need to figure out what that means, go to our Facebook page. All the details are there. If you want to just give some finances for somebody else to go shop, you can do that too. It's very, very easy to do all of that. Second is I want to just invite you all to continue to turn in your intention cards. Um, those are about half in. We've only, only got about half of who we normally expect to have it. Please go ahead and turn those in and please make sure uh, that you, you know that if you need to adjust between now and the end of the year, that's just fine. But please try to get those in this week. Lastly, um, prayers over Caitlin recovering from surgery um, and also uh, Ray Lynn who lost her father this week uh, due to COVID. Um, we are mindful that that's a tough time already for uh, Jeff and Hope and Michaela and Raylan, um, but in particular, this is going to be a difficult time for them. So please reach out with prayers and with words of hope. And now for the lighting of our Advent wreath. I'm so excited. You ready to go, guys? Here we go. Hi, I'm Kaylin. Hi, I'm Declan. Okay. <laughs> This place is a mess. If there is ever a year we need to have it, this is the mess. We hardly know how to describe this year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the best around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right, nothing seems like it used to be, nothing we need to add. The prophet Isaiah called out to us, oh, that... Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. You can still see us even though we feel lost in the rubble. This will be the guy that brings, this will be Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Awesome. Awesome. What awesome, awesome kids we have. Listen, have you ever heard the saying, hindsight's twenty twenty? This is something I think we've been talking about this whole year. Hindsight is 21. Man, I remember being in a con congregation that I worked, that, worked at. That they, they worked so hard on putting together this 2020 visioning plan. It was such a cool idea to endeavor. And it was like years ago. I want to say it was like way, way, way back before I even got there. To be thinking about the future, about how they could challenge and grow. And so proud about how that they pushed themselves outside of their comfort zone because they wanted to see into the future and plan to rise to the occasion, but I don't think anybody on their best day envisioned what this 2020 was going to look like. Hot sides 2020, right? Well, yeah, 2020 sure has been something. I thought it would be so much more. I think all of us thought this year would be so much more. It's been such an up and down year, and for a lot of folks, it's been a particularly difficult and down year, way more than up. Recently heard somebody say that 
I don't have as much to be thankful for this year, Pastor. I mean, really, it's just been that kind of year, and I don't really have anything to put into the thankful blessing bowl of Thanksgiving. So much is in disarray. I can't be with my family. I can't be with my friends. I can't do what I used to do. It's all changed. Well, yeah. I mean, it's true, right? It's absolutely true. Everything has changed. And we've lost so much this year. I promise this won't be a super downer sermon, but gosh, we got to at least talk about it. So many people can't be together this year. The holidays were already different and difficult. They already bring grief along with them as we remember those who aren't with us anymore. It's a tough time for all, especially those who are already dealing with anxiety and depression. It's a tough time for sure and for everyone in particular this year. So I want to give a short disclaimer. I want you to be on the lookout for those who are retreating out of your life right now. Those who you normally heard from quite a bit, and maybe you're just not hearing from them right now. I want you to think about who those people might be. Notice when you're not hearing as much from them, or when they put posts up on Instagram or Facebook about depression or sadness or anxiety. That is, that is a flag that you need to see that they are raising. For you to reach out to them, please do it. Please reach out to those folks. It could be that they are drowning in the midst of depression and anxiety, and they may not even know it. And additionally, if that's you who's drowning, please call me, text me, reach out to me, however you can, and let us know so that we can walk with you. Because here's the deal, church. 2020 has been a rough year. It's been a tough year. And we've been reading through the prophets and then all of a sudden, we get Haggai. I bet you didn't even know that was a book, book in the Bible. Danny said he didn't even know that was a book in the Bible. I said, man, you need to be studying up. Everybody knows about Haggai. Haggai chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. But now, you ready? Say it with me, church. Be strong. Zerubbabel. But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedek. The high priest, be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when I came, when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Boy, we're off to a good start. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I'll shake all the nations and what is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. Saying it's going to be even better than it was. I'll explain what that means in just a minute. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Almighty, but now, verse says, verse four says, but now, be strong, be strong, be strong. But wait a second, <laughs> because you got to know what's going on here. You got to know what's going on around this. This is just around the time that King Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody say Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> he invaded and runs out the Jewish people. Just runs them out. Then they start to kind of settle back in a little bit. Everything kind of settles. And then, boom, 10 years later, he does it again and completely destroys the temple in Jerusalem. So this writing that we get in Haggai comes to a displaced people. They have been run off. The temple, which was the center of their lives, is gone. No traditions can take place. Families aren't together anymore. It's the diaspora. They're all dispersed everywhere and it feels like all is lost and then they get this message be strong seriously god seriously really in the middle of this right i'm be strong really how my family is all apart everybody's in different places than they were before there's no traditions i can't go to the temple i used to always go to the temple and then our family would get together and we would do these things at the temple and everything was normal and that's not there anymore and i can't be where i want to be because i can't be in my land with my family i can't be where i am and it's never going to be the same again <laughs> and now i know somebody's tracking with me this is resonating with you right now and here's the thing God knows, brothers and sisters, God knows that we are hurting. 
that we're saying the same things that this people of God were saying when they got this word, be strong. God knows that this was a rough year. God knows that we miss each other. God knows that our traditions are all messed up right now. And God knows that our center is shifted. But you know what? The people of God have been here before. And that is what God is reminding them. This won't last. This won't last. God will restore God's people. God will restore God's church. God will bring healing where there's hurt and bring life where there is death. Be strong because I, says the Lord, am still here, still working, still bringing life. Be strong and get to work, is what Haggai says. Now, this is the first Sunday in Advent. Everybody say, woo Advent, woo Advent. It's a time we start looking for what we call the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. We look for the places where the fullness of God's kingdom is coming. It's not just about Christmas for four weeks. The season of Christmas is actually beyond Christmas. So it starts at Christmas and it goes on from there. This is the season of Advent and it's about preparing, preparing the way of the Lord, looking to the skies for the fullness of God to come, the advent of a new kingdom, God's full kingdom. And Haggai's word, Woo! It's a word for us right now to be strong and see what God has done and know that God will redeem us still and see that God has always been good, is good, and will forever be good. God wants us to have confidence in the God's work and presence because God, the Lord of heavenly forces, the CEB version, this one right here says that God, the Lord of heavenly forces, is still at work. And God is a God of promises fulfilled. So, church, why fear? Why not just go forward? Well, I think maybe it's not about fear. I think that we're feeling right now is, is not necessarily about fear. I want to read with you Matthew chapter 7. Now, this is the Sermon on the Mount, right? Started in chapter 5, goes through 6, and then 7. Some of my favorite stuff in the entirety of Scripture is found in Matthew 7, 24 through 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and then doesn't put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings. Was he because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers of the law. So stick with me right here, church. Because maybe it's less about fear and more about navel gazing. You know what I mean? Just looking at your belly. Maybe it's about walking around with blinders on and not seeing the fullness of the picture of God. Maybe it's about not remembering the fullness of the story of God. Why do you think that we read scripture over and over and over again? Why do you think that pastors are called to tell that message of hope every single week? Because brothers and sisters, we forget it after a day. Heck, we forget it after an hour and a half on Sunday after lunch. Sometimes we're back in the same rut we were before. We just forget all the time that God is good, that God is proud that God is at work. See, and Haggai calls us to be strong in the midst of adversity. And then Matthew tells us how. First though, quick, quick story. Had a friend of mine, awesome, awesome, awesome guy, got just immersed in easy to find and more difficult to find substances that messed up his whole life and his world. And he was incredibly frustrated by all of that. And at one point was telling me his story a number of years ago. And I'll never forget it. He said, Matt, I hit rock bottom. Now, at the time, I hadn't really thought about what that means. And, and since I've been a pastor, I've thought about a really different understanding about what ultimately it means to hit rock bottom. 
I know this isn't the first time you've heard a story like this. As a matter of fact, some of you even told me this story, what you said to me. I did look around, Pastor. I looked around for where God was at work. I looked back to see that story, but here I am still smack down on rock bottom. But here's the thing. Whenever you hear that saying rock bottom, I want you to think of Matthew 7, 24 through 29. That reminds us that God builds us up on the rock that's Jesus so when you hit rock bottom when it feels like all is lost when it feels like you've got nothing left to give and you hit that smack down on rock bottom brothers and sisters it means that God is about ready to rebuild you on Jesus come on now I'm preaching to somebody it means that God's about ready to rebuild that house that is you on top of Jesus you can't go any lower than that in the waters of baptism you were claimed you can't be built on sand anymore you can only be built on rock because that's how God does it when God claims God's children you don't get the leftovers you get the best that there is And that's how God works. When you've hit rock bottom, you're just at Jesus, the fullness of Jesus. So instead of getting super frustrated, look around and see how God's going to start building you back up. Matthew tells us how to live out that be strong that we hear in Haggai. It means that we... It means that we start here, that we return back to the story to get built back up on that rock. And think about this. This is Matthew 5 through 7, right? Three full chapters, a sermon on the mount, probably the biggest, longest sermon any of us ever heard. And remember, Jesus has been talking for a long time at this point. He's given them three chapters worth of stuff, and that was only the stuff that we've got written down. And here we are, and what he's saying is, all the stuff that I've just told you, all the entirety of what this is, is pretty worthless, If you don't remember the story and start with the word of God, start with me. Let me build you up on the rock. Brothers and sisters, this is Advent. And our call in Advent, like you remember I said before, is to start looking around for the inbreaking of God's kingdom. That means like almost like you were looking up at the of the clouds and, and like the, the sky would rip open, right? This would be the great imagery. Schizo. Remember that word from Greek we learned a little while ago? The sky would schizo. It would open up. It would be ripped open. And we would see the fullness of God's kingdom come to life. You know, and I wonder about the, that is a great metaphor, but what does it mean for us to see those moments in our own lives? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm just going to be real straight with you. You're not going to see them if you're not allowing yourself to be immersed in the word of God, in the people of God, to share the supper This is why we have the call to remember our baptisms. When you wash your face, remember that you're built on the rock. When you share communion with your families and you're devastated because you wish you were better at this, that, or the other, remember you are built on the rock. When you forget to pray or or your eyes go in the direction they shouldn't go or you ignore your neighbor or you ignore the hurting and the hungry and the homeless, remember you were built on the rock and God is not done with you. How God is building you up on that word, that rock of Jesus. Being rebuilt, guys, sometimes is a really, really difficult process. Have you ever remodeled a home? Have you ever gone in and tried to do some repairs? It's hard. It's difficult. It takes time. But God promises to build us up, back together, put us back together, even stronger than ever. 2020's got nothing on us, nothing on God's people, because this word is life-changing, fulfilling filling sustenance in a difficult time so that you can be strong and look around to see how God then can tell you, like Haggai said, be strong and then get to work. How is it that God's going to use you? You don't have to do everything, church. I don't need you to do everything. God doesn't need you to do everything. Just do the one thing. Just do the one thing that God calls you to do. Do your part to bring that kingdom into places that are waiting on hope to point to the kingdom and promise, and promise God will be with you. So church, this week, and every week, for the rest of the year, look around and see those blessings. Look around for how God has already been at work in your life. Look around to see the great abundance. Look around and give thanks, for God is good. And 
then look around and see where you get to bring the kingdom. Look around for how your gifts are for others. Look around to see how you are the gospel already. So yeah, 2020 sure was something. <laughs> but it's a time that we get to look around and see that God is more. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks. For you are the God of life. You are the ultimate rebuilder. When it feels like we've been torn down, ripped apart, and everything is not where it's supposed to be, Lord, that's the moment where you remind us that we are built on the rock. And you start putting that house back together, bit by bit, room by room, God. And we give you thanks. Rebuild us today, Lord, that we can see that you are more. Help us to look around and see all those blessings, Lord, and then reflect the gifts that we've been given as gifts to others. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's children say, amen. I invite you to go ahead and get your communion supplies together, and we'll celebrate communion as a family of God. Amen. I invite you to gather together your communion supplies around your family. Maybe you have a blessing bowl. Maybe you have the communion elements. But as we gather together as God's people, we come to celebrate this victory feast together. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's children say, amen. As you gather together as your family, share the bread with one another and say, this is the body of Christ given for you. Share the wine or the grape juice together and say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Or if you have a blessing bowl, put your fingers into the water and make the sign of the cross on one another's forehead and say, you are a forgiven child of God. Take some time now as we sing together.
there's joy for the morning O oh, sinner be still earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal as we gather together and we taste as we taste the body and the blood, we know that our sins are forgiven. So may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. Amen. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul. like never before oh my soul I worship your holy You're not 
sing this last one again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, when my kids were younger, each year at Christmas, they would look for their Christmas presents throughout the house. And as they got older, it was harder and harder to find places to hide them. The best place that we found was to hide it like in a bookshelf or something that they were looking at every day, but couldn't see the present that was hidden there in the, among the books. We even joke about it to this day, talking about hiding things in plain sight. You know, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament in 2 Kings 6 is about Elisha and his servant. And his servant looks up and they are surrounded by a giant army. And he tells his master, and that's where you get that great line, there are more with us than there are against us. And then Elisha prays for his servant and his servant's eyes are opened and he's able to see that God and his angels have surrounded the army that's surrounding them. You know, that's a perspective that we all need today is to be able to see things that are hiding in plain sight, to be able to get the perspective that God gives us about what he's doing around us, <clears throat> surrounding our enemies, working in our midst. We just need to have our eyes open. God is always at work around us. It's my challenge I want to give to you for this Advent season, for the rest of the year. Each day, I want to encourage you to pray a prayer that's something like this. Say, God, open my eyes. Help me to see what it is that you're doing around me. Give me the opportunity to share your love with somebody who needs to know about your love. And to do that in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, God's going to bring some really neat things along your path. There's going to be some really exciting stories, whether it's big or little. We'd like to hear about that. Go ahead and send us that. Just tell us a little quip about the story about what God is doing in your midst as he opened your eyes and you saw the opportunity to help out someone or um, just to be a blessing to somebody else. With all of that, I hope you have a great week. I want you to look around this week and see what God is doing. See you next week.